Near the end of our conversation, I guess it was Thursday morning with uh, with Governor Butch Otter, uh, we just briefly got into the to the fact that the political opposition, uh, Democrats in uh, in Boise, perhaps don't believe that he's doing enough when it comes to talking about increasing some assistance for uh, education in Idaho, especially higher education. On the other hand, I guess it becomes somewhat of a relative discussion depending on where you happen to be standing. It's 844. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 38, looking for a high pretty much, well, of 38 today. I don't think it's going to be getting a whole heck of a lot warmer. And we're joined, as we always are, during this segment of the program on Monday mornings by the publisher of Idaho Weekly Briefing, Randy Staples. And first of all, welcome back. Good to be here. You actually said that the, the, the governors, and in what I was reading in your column, uh, you were pointing out that the governor really has has, uh, has addressed an issue that has been neglected for a number of years, and that uh, that at least it, it might be from the perspective of people who are actually in education, a good start. Well, I think uh, I, I think that people at, at colleges and universities would be happy uh, to see what uh, what he had to say in uh, in in this state of the state address. Uh, much more so than they've heard for a very long time. Uh, higher education in the uh, state of the states has, uh, oddly enough, only been been uh, peripherally mentioned for a long time. And I say oddly enough because higher education is a big part of what the state does. It's a substantial chunk of the state's uh, state's budget. But uh, it's taken uh, hits for for a long time. It hasn't it hasn't really gotten on the front burner of uh, of, of uh, attention of state policymakers for a long time, uh, and it's uh, it's it's uh, really quite a change in this one. Uh, the uh, the governor proposed a large increase. It'll be interesting to see if the uh, if the legislature goes along with that. But he proposed a large increase in a number of areas, and I can imagine the uh, the people at uh, the colleges and universities being a good deal happier this time around than they were at this point in a lot of past years. In fact, I think the, the discussion last year focused on uh, you know so much of it was issues that were related to transportation that a lot of people in schools felt they'd been left out, and I know there were predictions that this would be the year we would indeed see uh, a greater effort when it came to to education, especially higher education. And that uh, that wound up being the case. The uh, uh, a year ago, the uh, uh, the public schools got a little bit. Well, traditionally, public schools have tended to get a little bit more attention. Most people in Idaho have a closer connection, closer immediate connection to the public schools because obviously, so many people have uh, have children who are, are in them, and they tend to get a little bit more direct attention in the state of the states and they have for the last generation but higher education not so much now now having said all that uh that doesn't mean that public schools weren't mentioned a lot in this too they were probably mentioned they were mentioned more than than higher education uh if you, if you did a word count you probably find that to be the case uh, but uh, the fact that higher education got really serious attention one year, and I went back to uh, to Governor Otter's first state of the state in my column today, and and pointed out that his main reference to higher education in his first state of the state was to uh, was to say, "How about those Broncos?" <laughs> and, and there just wasn't a whole lot there, but there was this time. The the other uh, real, I think. Serious point about this is the cost of that parents are worried about the cost of a higher education, and of course he addressed the growth at places like CWI, and we see it here at CSI as well. You can still get a, a, a decent cost for your education dollar, and he'd like to pay more attention to those particular schools. Yeah, the, uh, the there's I think a little bit of growing national attention too to uh, uh, to community colleges and the opportunity that that they offer for. Uh, getting a relatively low cost start. There are a lot of students at CWI, particularly, who simply could not afford or could not could not manage uh, education at Boise State University, which is located in the same community, which offers a lot of the same coursework and so on. But they just couldn't couldn't manage those kinds of costs, and the need and the demand has been really obvious in the explosive growth 
of it. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I've said that I don't think it would be surprising if another couple of decades from now, or maybe even less, that that you have a college in Western Idaho that has as many as fifty thousand students. Oh, wow, <laughs> it's going to be one big campus. It uh, well, it, and it's spread across. The way it's structured is actually it's spread across several locations, but it'll be one big school. That's for sure. The, the the Democrats, I mean, obviously being in the opposition, they've got to come up with something, and it's not always going to be praise. Uh, it's just the way the nature of the game works. Uh, they didn't feel it obviously was enough. That was the the impression I got. Uh, uh, is that just blowing smoke because they feel a need to do that? Well, I think it's a I think it's a reflection on the past previous years, uh, of the years between the uh, uh, the the big recession around '08. And uh, and up, coming up to pretty recently, uh, there was very little. Uh, there there were education cuts that were unprecedented in the state's history. Even in the Great Depression, uh, there were not cuts uh, along these lines. Uh, so some of it was reflecting the point that that even with these increases this year, uh, you won't be getting back up to an equivalent of where we were in 2007 or 2008. That uh, that that's uh, uh, you know it's still not getting up to that point, and it's kind of by way I think of keeping the heat on in that regard. Uh, as far as a one-year increase, realistically, there's a limit to what you can do in a one-year increase, and you're talking about increases here of seven or eight percent. Those are those are pretty substantial for budgets of those uh, of this size. About ten minutes away from nine o'clock, Randy Staples, the publisher of Idaho Weekly Briefing, joins us. Monday mornings between 8.40 and 9 o'clock, and sharing some thoughts with us on some of the latest developments around the state of Idaho today, 39. Uh, Randy, for people who would like to uh, take a look at the website, where do they go? They would go to www.ridenbaugh.com. That's R-I-D-E-N-B-A-U-G-H. I don't want to throw anything out of order, but I just looked up at the TV monitor here in my office, or in the studio, rather, and there was a, a shot, looks like a live shot, out of uh, out of Germany of a plane on a runway, and uh, or it might have been uh, just the plane when it arrived during the night from Iran. Uh, big, big excitement, obviously, across Idaho uh, with the news that uh, Saeed Abedini was released over the weekend. And uh, that's a story that has been, of course, not just local but national. And um, it, it, it seems that at least the family's prayers have been answered on that one. That one, uh, there are a lot of people in Idaho who are, who are surely going to be very happy about that. Uh, the congressional delegation has uh, has pressed for his release for a long time. Of course, that's you know that 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 doesn't carry with it the, uh, an enormous amount of clout in Iran necessarily. Uh, but uh, it's it's certainly kind of gratifying to see that that he and the others who were held there are are uh, being released, and uh, that's that's been a long time coming. And, I'm, and there are undoubtedly a lot of people very happy about it. I would think, though, that uh, even Iranians, because we see this all the time, that people from foreign countries know more about our government than we know about theirs, so they likely <laughs> would know the names of our guys. Well, that's that's entirely possible. Or there are certainly some Iranians who uh, who would, and, and your point that a lot of people in other countries know more about our government than we know about theirs, absolutely true. Uh, we, we are relatively ignorant about, uh, about a lot of a lot of other governments around the world by comparison. There was a story last week, and, and I guess a, it, it's a perspective type of thing. It, it made me laugh a bit when I first saw it. It uh, was right after uh, there was one lawsuit that, that followed after the state was uh, busily, uh, the fish and wildlife was a uh, fish and game rather, was trying to collar elk. Apparently several wolves were collared as well. Now, I know the difference between one and the other, but it seems <laughs> that uh, the explanation officially is there was a miscommunication. Uh, yeah, the in, in essence, they they just messed up. Uh, they, they and and I I would give a certain amount of credit to uh, to state fish and game in in that regard for uh, upfront acknowledging it, and not trying to prevaricate on it. They said that we made a mistake. Uh, it was uh, it was it was a, it, it was a, a serious enough. Uh, problem that, uh, that that presumably some kind of action would be taken. Uh, the feds who do some oversight made clear that they were not happy about it either. But but uh, you know I suppose that 
that given that there wasn't an attempt, so far as I can see it, any sort of a uh, of a cover up or uh, or misrepresenting what happened, uh, there doesn't seem to be any of that. Uh, I, I suspect there will there's uh, there's a certain amount of forgiveness that will probably come along as well. The the, the objections it seems uh, try to center on this and saying, well, obviously they'd like to see these animals hunted and killed. I, I think that that was a bit of a stretch to. When, when there was some opposition group that made that claim, I, I thought that perhaps that was uh, a little bit too much because I don't see how this would, unless it was a fish and game during the killing, I don't see how anyone would be able to do that. Yeah, it uh, it, it would have, I think that was probably kind of a stretch. Uh, I, I think it, uh, I'm not, not quite sure how that, how that whole thing would have happened. Somebody may, somebody may have legitimately thought that there had been some new experimental program that had started up or something. I don't know. Um, I, I imagine we will be hearing more about, uh, about how all of it happened exactly and, uh, and who misunderstood what. Yeah. I, in fact, we'll have a spokesman in, in a few weeks from uh, fish and, uh, fish and game on the program and probably get a better, a thorough explanation on that. Uh, we, that would be a, that would be a good thing to ask him about. No <laughs> First thing off the top, most likely, unless some other bizarre story comes along, and maybe they're dropping more beavers from airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> they enjoyed the uh, the uh, public relations out of that one, though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You you also at the weekly briefing you you keep tabs uh, on gasoline prices across the state of Idaho, and I was telling you earlier this morning that. A year ago, I was paying, I think, a dollar fifty-one point nine for a gallon of unleaded regular on Blue Lakes Boulevard. Now, I think I'd be paying about a dollar ninety-six point nine, even with the additional state gas tax. That seems a little excessive to me, especially when we've seen the price of oil just tumbling throughout the year. Um, what do you think gives here? Well, it very it varies so much around the country and around the state, and it varies from time to time. Of course, in between those two. Uh, uh, those two price marks, it uh, it was for a while a whole lot higher, well up into the two dollar area, and uh, you know well up in the, into the two dollars, and around the region and uh, and around the country, it's really interesting to uh, to see how the uh, uh, the gas prices uh, fluctuate and how they vary, even when you take a, take uh, out the whole question of uh, you know of of state uh, gas taxes contributing to that. The different states have different levels of gas taxes. And that's going to contribute to the, the variations. But even if you take that out, the variations around the country are really striking. Uh, there's one site that I go on to check on uh, on gas prices around the country, and it includes kind of a heat map that, uh, that shows areas where gas prices are, are high and low. And I've tried for years to make any sense out of why they are the way they are and, and have yet to figure it out. And I would think that, for instance, if you were you were near the refinery in Wyoming, you'd be getting a bit of a break because they don't have to truck it that far once it's it's refined. So, you know, I've, I've heard all these, these, there's multiple factors, but that's that's one I've heard as well. On the other hand, we aren't that far from that refinery either, and, and we get some really wide swings in the state of Idaho. Idaho really does get some wide springs, uh, wide swings that way. Out on the coast, it tends to be a little bit higher. Uh, California traditionally has higher uh, gas prices, although part of that is because of of uh, higher gas prices and partly because of regulations that that uh, require the gas be maintain certain specific formulas that are really California specific. So there's that. In that case, uh, Idaho doesn't have that kind of thing going for it, but. For whatever reason, Idaho's gas prices are not the same as Montana's or Wyoming's. That's for sure. They are. Uh, when I've traveled around through that part of the the uh, the region, uh, I come back into Idaho from one of those states, and the prices take a jump. I was going to say in California, as Mike Reco would have probably, if to paraphrase him, uh, they run their automobiles on moonbeams. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, thank you much. We'll talk again in another week. Quickly, though, before we go, what's the website again? It is www.rydenbaugh.com, R-I-D-E-N-B-A-U-G-H. Have a great week, sir. You too. Take care now. Randy Staples joining us this morning from Idaho Weekly Briefing right here on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. 9 o'clock news is just ahead. It's 39.
Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning. We have one more hour of the program just ahead following Fox News. I hope you can stick around for that. Got a little political news coming up, a little faith news. And speaking of gasoline prices, we'll get back to that subject if we can as well.